All right, give it the inaugural test. Just getting pressure. Just getting air out of the line. There we go. Oh, you have it blocked. Yeah. Ready? Want to see if yeah. it drains? So a few things about the lab, it's still under construction, obviously. I'm doing this in an old barn that was for a painter. So he wasn't as concerned about dust as a photographer, obviously. But I'm still working on um, building a dust-free environment, which takes time. I don't have all the money in the world to just throw up whatever I want. So I've got my little digital area here. This is the UV printer with the contact frame. Hello. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate the water system uh, to capture all the chemicals that shouldn't be going into septics and groundwater. So, water's running here. This is just well water coming out of my well, plumbed right in. This is a sink here. You can see I'm using it. You can see the, the bichromate, dichromate down in here. I need to wash stuff, right? So when I wash stuff, I don't want it to go in, into my traditional septic system and then into groundwater. So instead, when I put it down the drain, it's going into this cheap reservoir that I came up with using RV parts. This saved a lot of money because it's literally just this these RV sewer um, parts. And this is actually meant for, for black water for an RV but instead I'm using it for the, to catch all the um, poisonous photography chemicals. It has an outlet here that fits for a hose. So once it's full, I'll hook this up to a hose. I close that up and I can get the water, the contaminated water out into jugs like this and bring it to Lewiston. And they can charge, they charge like 20 or $25 a bottle for recycling. Um, safe recycling which is really good and the other thing is with this chemical I can also leave it for a while out in the Sun in some of these bottles with the cap off and let the water evaporate and then I can cut it open scrape the crystals off and reuse the crystals so I don't necessarily have to just bring gallons and gallons of water to Lewiston all the time like this is at the end of the summer after I've recycled this stuff multiple times Here we are the next evening. Part of the complication of making gum prints is that everything has to like dry and everything. And if you don't have a full lab, I had to basically let this sit for a day in my homemade light trap. So next day we're back, got a digital negative, lay it over here. And I ordered this UV burner online this is a contact printer that I can lay over top of it, same size as a UV printer, which is nice because I don't have to wear goggles. Open this up. This is one of my digital negatives from a million years ago. Pop it in here. Detachable operation. Ideally, all this stuff is clean. Right now, I'm just trying to come up with a method and a process rather than worrying about everything being perfectly clean that will come with the building of everything. This day. Now, if I had like bigger facilities, I could do this faster because I could make um, test sheets, but I don't. So I'm going by my original process 
which you use something similar to this, and we'll see where I get tomorrow. It'll develop overnight for 12 hours, and then tomorrow we'll see how it develops. There is a timer on this, but I haven't figured out how it works yet. So So I didn't get a ghost image, which can be common on these. So it, it's not always happens. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna write one minute on the back of this. And I'm gonna put it face down in my distilled water. And that's gonna soak overnight. And now I'm gonna open up my homemade light trap and grab one of the other pa papers that I made. Now, there's two reasons I could not have a ghost image. It could be because my dichromate is no good because it's old, or it could be because I didn't have it in there long enough, so. And it wasn't warmed up. And it wasn't warmed up. Very good, Jason. So, I'm... Oh, but it's changing a color. Oh. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. See it? Do you see it? I see it. Okay. So that was five minutes? Okay. Cool. That may be some success. So, this is actually cool the way it is. So, oh, that's not cool. Well, it's okay. Uh, don't mind me. Anyway, back to our original programming. So you can see the ghost image, right? See that square? And you see how the, the chemical has changed color, too. Look. It's gotten, like, darker. So that's good. So the chemical's not off. So, oh, wait. I just want to differentiate because I wrote, it's just, this is six minutes. It'll be obvious the difference between the five minute and the one minute, but the six and the five, not so much. So again, I'm just going to put these in here and basically what's going to happen overnight, um, the distilled water is going to leach the chemical out. Anything that did not harden from the UV, meaning anything that had less dichromate in it, is going to leach out of this paper. And the reason I'm letting it sit for 12 hours, I have discovered is that you get a better, I would say how you would understand it, you let you get less noise or less grain. So yes, I could take these and speed wash them, meaning I could take a hose at like high pressure and hose it off. That would be the faster thing. It's okay. I don't want to be up all night printing right now anyway. But also, the like the the texture of the image comes out better if you just put them right face down and don't move them for like 12 hours and everything dissolves it's supposed to dissolve if you sit there doing this it makes it grainy which could be a thing if you like that but i don't i don't that's not what i'm going for so i'm gonna let them sit and we'll see what happens tomorrow thank you main arts commission very grateful. Thank you. So I just want to like clarify that these may look like nothing to some people out there, especially those of you who have like a formal lab that you can print in regularly. But the first time I ever learned how to gum print, I taught myself and I did everything myself and I had a formal lab, but it took me like three months of being like obsessed in that lab to start getting prints like this and just because I kept my old notes and I learned like that I have the knowledge a little bit to do this and like the first time I managed to get an image in this lab so that's actually like really means something that's why I say success even though these prints don't actually really look like much formally but like it took me <laughs> for homemade darkroom stuff. This is really cool. This is really cool. I mean, we're not talking pro lab here. This is like my home homemade darkroom, and I'm getting this. And I screwed up the negative, and you can see.